The White House making final preparations at this hour for the president to visit the massacre sites of El Paso and Dayton, Ohio, tomorrow. And this comes as the congresswoman representing El Paso refuses to join the president for his visit, saying he turned down her request for a phone call prior to the trip and, quote, I refuse to be an accessory to his visit. I refuse to join without a dialogue about the pain his racist and hateful words and actions have caused. Congresswoman Veronica Escobar's words coming as she says her constituents are flooding her with complaints about the president's visit, blaming him for a climate of hate and fear against immigrants. Our Ed Lavendera is in El Paso today, and this is what he heard. Since we have this president, I mean, things have been escalating a lot. Donald Trump's aiming it in one direction. You know, we don't want those people here. They're dangerous. They're violent. They're the other. They're not like us. They're not from here. They don't belong here. They shouldn't come here. The last time President Trump went to El Paso, it was for a rally. He has been there. And that rally came with fear-mongering and lies about the border and immigrants. Here is some of what President Trump said in El Paso. We are cutting loose dangerous criminals into our country. Murders, 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 killings, murders. Murders. Three months later, President Trump asked a crowd of supporters in Florida how to stop migrants from crossing into the United States. And here's what happened. How do you stop these people? You can't. There's no. That's only in the panhandle you can get away with that statement. He laughs. Does he understand now that it wasn't funny or that some of the people that he called murderers were murdered by a white man who called them invaders? The same word Trump himself has used. This is an invasion. When you see these caravans starting out with 20,000 people, that's an invasion. We're on track for a million illegal aliens to rush our borders. People hate the word invasion, but that's what it is. We're stopping people at the border. This is an invasion, and nobody's even questioning that. So tomorrow is a huge day for President Trump. The whole country will be watching. He has a chance to speak to everyone. Caitlin Collins is out front live outside the White House. So, Caitlin, what more are you learning about what the president is going to do, what he's going to say tomorrow? Well, we know that first she's going to head to Ohio, and then he'll be going on to Texas. And during both of those stops, the president said he plans on meeting with some of the first responders, some of the law enforcement, and even some of the victims while he's there. And, of course, on these trips, as we've seen in the past, the president is known to make some impromptu remarks. And that's something that White House aides are not ruling out right now, Aaron. But, of course, something else that is going to be something, a problem that the president has to deal with is these local officials that are saying that they do not think it's best for the president to come. And they've been pretty vocal about saying that they think that right now the president should stay away from their cities because they're still grieving. Now, White House officials are downplaying this. They're brushing off these criticisms, saying that the president didn't go visit these cities in the aftermath of these two shootings, that the president would still face a round of criticism from similar people. But, of course, you're hearing from people like the mayor of Dayton, who said that she did not feel that the president's address to the nation yesterday did enough, that it went far enough. And that is why you see the comments, like you just showed her saying there, where she thinks that people who who aren't happy with the president's visit should voice those concerns while the president is there. Now, this isn't the first time he's faced resistance when he's gone and visited cities like this. You saw it in Parkland, Florida, after the shooting at that high school where some of the students uh, said that they did not feel like the president should come. You also saw it in Pittsburgh after that synagogue shooting when the mayor of the city refused to meet with the president while he was there and those funerals were getting started for those victims. So it's not exactly a new problem that the president is going to be facing. But, of course, this is going to be a trip that is highly scrutinized, and that's something that even aides back here at the White House have acknowledged has been a test for the president in the past, whether or not he can maintain that unifying tone. So certainly, regardless of what does happen tomorrow, it's going to be a highly scrutinized visit for the president, and everyone back here at the White House is very aware of that.